I'm afraid I'm uh, in, uh, at the risk of repeating myself. I've spoken about similar, uh, uh, on a similar topic before. And recently, uh, just a couple of days ago, um, at the uh, Y Marx uh, series of, series of uh, debates, in fact, I, uh, in, in that case, it was a debate. I, I represented uh, the same viewpoint that I'm going to present now. I'm going to expand a little bit on, on what I said uh, the other day in that uh, uh, Y Marx seminar, a web webinar. Um, I'm not going to uh, talk about uh, one state or two state in the abstract. That is to say, uh, I'm not uh, here to say that in no po at no point in the future, some kind of, of resolution of the conflict uh, may not, I'm, I'm not going to deny that it, it may uh, uh, perhaps take the form of a one state or two state or any, any other uh, uh, blueprint that, that is not what I'm addressing today. I, I'm, I'd like to address the, the so-called two-state solution um, and the one-state solution as they are presented today in the form that they are advocated for uh, by various people uh, currently. Uh, I'm going to argue that uh, both are uh, illusions, for, but for different reasons. Uh, the two-state illusion is uh, because it, it is not, even, even if it were implemented, it's not going to be a resolution of the conflict. I mean, uh, even in the unlikely case that it will be somehow uh, implemented, it, it, if you look at the actual details of what is proposed, uh, this is not going to be a resolution of the conflict. Uh, and in fact, it's going to uh, continue the conflict in, in a somewhat different form. But in any case, it is a, a, a completely, uh, uh, almost almost uh, 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 impossible to imagine that, that it will be implemented e even so. Uh, as for the one state, or at least some version of the one state solution that is being proposed, if it were implemented, if it could be implemented uh, under present circumstances, uh, then uh, at least some versions of it uh, may resolve the conflict. The problem with it is that the, the present situation, the present uh, uh, set of conditions that, that prevail in, in the Middle East do not allow uh, this uh, solution to be implemented. I think uh, before looking at, at this or that proposed solution, uh, I think uh, uh, it, it's best if I uh, uh, address three points Three, uh, under three headings, if you like. First of all, what are the minimum conditions that a resolution of the conflict must satisfy? I'm talking about the conflict, of course, between Zionism and the uh, Palestinian people. Uh, secondly, I'm going to say something about the nature of the conflict, which is uh, uh, very, uh, uh, commonly obscured in most uh, uh, mainstream discussion of 
uh, the conflict? What is the, really the nature of the conflict? And uh, thirdly, I'm going to uh, address the third, under the third heading, uh, what are uh, the preconditions for uh, a proper resolution uh, of the conflict? Well, how a, a resolution may be achieved? Uh, what is the route to achieving it? So first of all, if you like, let me formulate briefly a, a sort of minimum program, if you like, or a, a, a set of minimum conditions as to what would count as a resolution of the conflict. What, what situation uh, would count as uh, having the, the conflict having been resolved? Uh, the minimum condition will include equal rights for all. No uh, privileges, uh, either uh, as between persons, that is to say equal personal rights for all, and secondly and importantly, uh, equal national rights for both national groups involved. And I would like to specify what I mean by the national groups involved here, because this is uh, often uh, obscured to some extent by talking about Jews and Arabs or Jews and Palestinians. Uh, to be specific, the, on the one side, we have uh, the national uh, Palestinian collective, that is to say the Palestinian Arabs, both those who are citizens of Israel and, and uh, those who are uh, refugees in the occupied territories and uh, beyond. So this is clear. On the other side, uh, the other national group involved is the uh, Hebrew or so-called Israeli Jewish uh, national group. I uh, exclude in this uh, the, uh, the Zionist idea of the, of the uh, the uh, Jewish people all around the world uh, 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 constituting some kind of national uh, entity that has some rights or should have some rights in or let alone on uh, Israel Palestine. This is this is uh, not what I mean by the uh, equal rights for two national groups. Uh, I, I repeat the national groups, that should be uh, should have equality uh, in any uh, proper resolution of the conflict are the Palestinian Arab uh, national group and the Israeli Jewish or the Hebrew speaking uh, uh, national group actually present in Israel Palestine. Okay, uh, why do I insist on? Uh, equal national rights for both groups, simply because uh, any situation in which one national group is uh, denied equal rights, uh, is underprivileged or dominated by the other, is not a, a, a situation that can last and it cannot be regarded as a resolution of the conflict. Uh, any uh, configuration in which one of these two national groups uh, is uh, underprivileged, does not enjoy equal rights with the, the other national group, uh, will lead to uh, resistance, and the resistance will lead to conflict as it has done uh, in the past. I would add to this minimum program also uh, the right of the Palestinian refugees to return to their, to, uh, their uh, homeland from which they were uh, expelled in the Nakba of 1947-49.
Uh, this is simply a, 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 an elementary right that is uh, 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 under both under uh, the, uh, an elementary concept of justice as well as under international law, the right of refugees to return to their uh, home or homeland, I mean. So anything that is far short of, or anything that is short of this minimum, minimum set of conditions is simply not acceptable as a, 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 a possible resolution of the conflict. I think uh, since uh, the rest of what I, I'm going to say is, is on the negative side, why a, a two-state uh, so, so-called solution is really an illusion and why the one-state solution is, is uh, uh, an illusion for different reasons. Uh, in, in order not to uh, be completely negative, if we want to advocate something positive, then this minimum program is, I think, what should be uh, advocated. Uh, I, I don't think it's a good idea to, to uh, uh, politically and educationally to uh, uh, be uh, uh, negative, say, uh, to say this is impossible, this is impossible, even if it's true. You have to uh, uh, indicate what you do advocate as a, a a minimum condition for the resolution of the conflict. And in this, in, in this set, very simple set of minimum conditions, equal rights uh, for all individuals, individual rights, and equal national rights, and the right of the uh, refugees to return to their homeland is, I think, uh, uh, what, what we should posi uh, positively advocate. Anything that falls short of, of this is not uh, doesn't qualify as a, 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 a resolution of the conflict, whether or not it is possible. Okay, well, this is this is a, a, a minimum set of conditions. Secondly, I would like to uh, say something about the nature of the conflict. I think this needs. Uh, specifying because there is a lot of misrepresentation and uh, confusion about it. Uh, it is, if you, if you look at the mainstream media, uh, the way uh, the, the conflict is uh, represented is uh, uh, two uh, national groups uh, fighting over some uh, uh, territory. That is to say, we have two national groups claiming uh, possession or claiming uh, rights over uh, a, a piece of, of uh, turf. One of them may be stronger than the other. Evidently, uh, uh, Israel is uh, uh, a nuclear state. Uh, it is. Uh, it has a, a, a formidable army, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It is uh, uh, by far the stronger of the two sides. But um, it, the conflict is presented as as though it is a conflict between between two nations, like let's say France and Germany. Uh, in in the, the recent past or in the nineteenth century, there are two two nations fighting over some uh, piece of land. Now, this, uh, the, 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 the reason why this uh, kind of misrepresentation, and it is a misrepresentation of the conflict, is because it is, it has some surface pl plausibility. And this is due to the fact that uh, the conflict, which is basically a colonial conflict, as, as I shall argue, and uh, I, I think we, we must uh, all understand, um, is unique among all colonial situations in which both sides, the 
colonizers and the colonized have uh, crystallized as uh, national groups. Let me uh, uh, explain what I mean by this. Uh, th there has been uh, in the in you know since the the uh, end of uh, col uh, colonial slavery, uh, there have been two in modern times two kinds of uh, colonization. Um, Kautsky. Uh, Gave, gave, used the following terminology, a, a colonization in which the main uh, labor force, the main uh, uh, producers were the indigenous people, where the, the economy was based on the exploitation of the, the labor force of the indigenous people. This he termed work colony, sorry, exploitation colony, exploitation colony. Um, the other type, and ex examples of exploitation colony are uh, uh, abundant mainly in Africa. The last uh, instance of this which has been colonized the most recent decolonized most recently is that of South Africa. If you look at it this is a, a, an example where the, the uh, settlers uh, build up their political economy on the exploitation of indigenous labor. The other type uh, of which Australia, for example, is, is a, 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 a very uh, obvious example, is a, a colonial situation where uh, the main direct producers were uh, themselves settlers. That is to say that the, 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 the colonial political economy was based on the self-work of some of the settlers. Kautsky uh, call this type work colony. Uh, I prefer the uh, term exclusion colony. Uh, Kautsky's terminology is, is based on what the settlers did. They actually worked as, as uh, and formed the uh, main labor force of the, their political economy. I prefer exclusion col colony because it focuses on what on what the settlers did to the indigenous people. They excluded them. In uh, this type of colony, the indigenous people were simply surplus to requirement. They were not needed. They were uh, regarded as a nuisance. And indeed, in, in some of these places, uh, uh, they were uh, completely or nearly completely uh, uh, annihilated, uh, exterminated. I mean, this this uh, happened in, in in Tasmania, for example. Uh, now, in uh, exploitation colony, as far as I know, that uh, there is no uh, instance of an exploitation colony in which the settlers formed a, a new nation. Uh, of settlers. They remain a quasi uh, class. Eventually, what happened was either they, uh, uh, the colony was decolonized and the uh, settlers may have been uh, ejected, may have, I mean, as, as happened, uh, for example, mainly in Algeria, uh, the French settlers were uh, headed back to their uh, metropole, to, to, to France, and the, hardly any of them remained in, in the colony, or they may have merged with the uh, indigenous population. This happened 
in, in several places, especially in Latin America, uh, in Brazil, for example, uh, which was partly a slave-based uh, 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 colony, but also based on, on uh, indigenous labor, uh, the, the, the settlers uh, managed as a, a, a dominate, dominant class in the, the uh, indigenous, with the indigenous population. That happened uh, in uh, various ways, but as far as I know, there is no case in which the, the uh, settlers formed a new nation. On the other hand, the general rule is that, well, uh, there was uh, an exclusion colony, uh, such as Australia, some parts of North America, etc. The uh, settlers formed a new nation. But in every other case, other than in Israel, other than in Palestine, the indigenous people did not uh, uh, constitute a single national group. If you look at uh, uh, the situation, for example, in Australia, uh, the indigenous people consisted of, of, of a, a large number of groups with the different languages, uh, certainly nothing uh, remotely like a, a single nation. Similarly, in North America, the closest uh, this ever happened outside Palestine uh, was, as far as I know, in New Zealand where the indigenous people did have one common language, as far as I know. I'm not an expert on New Zealand history, but as far as I know about uh, uh, the history of uh, New Zealand and its colonization, uh, the indigenous people uh, had one common language, but they did not form anything like a single nation in, in anything approaching a modern state. The only case in which uh, not only the settlers for, uh, formed the new uh, settler nation, as in Australia, uh, North America, and so on, but also the indigenous people constituting a single nation is in Palestine. And this fact, uh, which uh, has, you know, I don't want to go here uh, into the, the, the reasons why this is uh, uh, the case, it simply, I simply want to state that this is evidently what happened. Because of this situation, uh, that both settlers and uh, indigenous people formed into new nations, uh, the uh, in, uh, colonial conflict assumed the surface form of a uh, uh, binary national conflict, one nation against the other. However, this is only uh, 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 the, the surface appearance of what is essentially, and at bottom, a colonial conflict. It is a, not a, a symmetric conflict between two national groups, but it is, a, 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 if you look at the actual uh, history and nature of the conflict as it unfolded, has it been unfolding for uh, uh, more than 120 years. It is a, a conflict of colonization between colonizers and, and indigenous people, which has assumed the surface form misleadingly of a, a, a binary national conflict. I, I think it is, this is very important to keep in mind in, uh, in, in, in considering what might count as a possible resolution of the conflict. Okay. What... Uh, Conclusion do we uh, draw from this uh, uh, clarification, from this uh, uh, statement about the nature of the conflict? Since the conflict is a, a, a colonial conflict between 
a colonizer nation and the colonized national group, uh, its resolution can only be one of decolonization. So we should uh, look at any proposed resolution of the conflict, any idea about how it should be resolved in terms of decolonization. By the way, I want to refer you to uh, 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 an article that I, I wrote, I think it was in uh, uh, 2016 for the Weekly Worker. Uh, you can find it in the uh, Weekly Worker archive, the decolonization of Palestine, which uh, uh, expands on uh, some of the ideas that I'm going to uh, present uh, this evening. Including this uh, circumstance, which I just I just mentioned, the exceptional uh, one of the exceptional uh, nature of this colonial conflict, one of several uh, uh, teachers of the uh, Zionist Palestinian conflict, which singles it out out of uh, uh, all other uh, colonial conflicts, including. Uh, ones uh, were which which involve uh, exclusion colonization. It is unique in many respects. Excuse me for one moment. Okay. Okay. Now let me uh, address the. Uh, two uh, so-called solutions that have been proposed. First of all, the, the two-state uh, solution. One of the many things that is wrong with it is precisely that it addresses the uh, conflict uh, on its superficial level as a conflict between two national groups. You have two national groups, let them both, each of them have, have a state of its own and that will resolve the conflict. Uh, of course, uh, this, this is based on a superficial and uh, misapprehension of what the, the, uh, the nature of the conflict really is. Uh, it is also a, 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 a a resolution that is in practice uh, virtually impossible to uh, uh, envisage uh, being implemented. Zionism is a, a work in progress. It is based on the uh, claim of uh, uh, the Zionist uh, movement of the Zionist uh, regime, which is uh, wedded to the Zionist project of colonization to complete the colonization of Palestine. Um, the uh, Zionists claim to have uh, uh, the right to the whole of the, the territory of Palestine, at the very least, between the uh, Sea between the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River. Uh, both uh, main, main camps of, of the Zionist movement, the one uh, originally led by Ben Gurion, uh, the so called labor Zionism, Zionism, which has now dwindled to uh, insignificance, as well as the, the revisionist. Uh, uh, wing of Zionism led by uh, Zeev Jabotinsky, which is now uh, the dominant uh, power in Israel. Both of them claim uh, the right of uh, the, the Jewish people in, in their terms to the whole of the Palestinian territory in between the uh, Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan, Jordan River except that the, the right wing, the revisionist, revisionist Zionist also claimed a, a right 
uh, to the uh, other side of the Jordan, to what is today the uh, Kingdom of Jordan, uh, which was uh, at the turn of the 20th century, uh, Transjordan, uh, the Emirate of Transjordan, and is now the, the Kingdom of Jordan. In principle, uh, revisionist Zionism claimed the right uh, to colonize also that uh, Transjordanian, the part of what used to be Palestine before it was partitioned by Churchill into Cisjordanian Palestine under the British mandate and uh, Transjordanian Palestine. In, if you look at it like this, the Zionist project is still work in progress. It is being uh, extended uh, into uh, new uh, domains. Uh, the colonization by Israel of uh, the West Bank and the pro proposed projected colonization of the Gaza Strip is part of this project. That is to say, to uh, create a situation where uh, Jews colonize the whole uh, uh, space between the Jordan and the, and the uh, Mediterranean Sea. In, in, in view of achieving this aim, where, uh, in which Israel is not merely a product of Zionist colonization, but a, a, an instrument, a, a means for its further extension and, and expansion, uh, uh, since 1967, Israel has been uh, colonizing uh, furiously, the uh, West Bank. Uh, uh, the, uh, and this happened both under uh, uh, labor Zionism and the governments dominated by labor Zionist, the Zionism, which, which has now dwindled in, into insignificance, and uh, by uh, uh, the inheritors of uh, revisionist Zionism. How, so at the same time, Israel has been on and off negotiating in, in bad faith about the implementation of, of a two-state solution in response to pressure by the so-called international community, which means the, basically the United States and its camp followers. The, it, it's it, under uh, labor Zionists, the tactics was to engage in negotiation and to drag them on endlessly by putting uh, one condition after another uh, in order to uh, uh, delay and uh, uh, prevent any kind of agreement uh, about a, a two-state solution. It was, uh, in fact, uh, uh, like two people, this has been described like two people are uh, uh, arguing, uh, negotiating over how to divide the pizza while one of them was eating piece after piece of the pizza while they were still talking about how to divide it. Uh, in fact, uh, if you look at the actual uh, situation on the ground, there is nowhere where a, a, a Palestinian state alongside Israel could, could uh, uh, be instituted. Uh, there's simply no, no, no territory left, which is, uh, uh, contiguous and and makes sense as as a, 
a territory for a state alongside Israel. Uh, the Likud governments uh, have actually been very explicit in, in outright opposition to uh, uh, any kind of uh, Palestinian state. However, uh, um, emaciated, however uh, emasculated uh, it, it might be, uh, Netanyahu is on record the saying simply no, no to uh, any Palestinian state. Uh, but uh, no other a major Zionist uh, party has ever agreed to a, 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 a Palestinian state alongside Israel. People are under the uh, false impression that uh, Rabin, uh, in uh, making the Oslo agreement with the PLO, uh, agreed to a, a, a two-state solution. Now, this is, this is a, a quite false. The Oslo Agreement has not a single word about a Palestinian state. It is the, 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 the whole notion of a Palestinian state is, is, is completely uh, missing in, in the Oslo Agreement, if you actually read the, the text. Moreover, in presenting the Oslo Agreement for ratification in the Knesset very uh, shortly before he was assassinated, Rabin made it clear that what uh, his thinking of is not a Palestinian state, but uh, quote, something less than a state. And in fact, it could not be anything uh, um, uh, approaching a, 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 a state in the, in the uh, proper sense of the word. Currently, there is a, a, a very strong international pressure on uh, uh, Israel to implement a, a, a two-state solution. It is very unlikely that uh, the United States, uh, certainly under uh, Trump, which is very probably going to be the next American president, or under uh, 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 the present uh, uh, regime, uh, uh, Biden, is going to be able to, uh, or willing to impose uh, even uh, uh, the, the, the so-called Palestinian state, uh, something less than a state on, on Israel. But suppose uh, that the uh, Biden idea of a, a two-state solution will somehow uh, be imposed on Israel. What, what would be the result? Well, it will not be anything like a, 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 an equal uh, solution. It will not, it will be uh, remotely diff uh, uh, distance for, from uh, the minimum conditions for a resolution of the conflict. Uh, you would have an Israeli nuclear regional superpower over 78% of the territory next to a demilitarized Palestine. They, they uh, specified uh, very explicitly that the, the Palestinian so-called state that the, uh, they envisage is going to be demilitarized. So uh, you, you'd have a, a demilitarized uh, Palestinian state uh, with the, a, a big, big uh, population of Israeli uh, messianic settlers because no Israeli regime is going to be able to evacuate the, the settlements from the uh, West Bank. Uh, this, this would lead to a civil war inside Israel. So no, no a, a, a prospective Israeli uh, government, existing or prospective, could uh, actually uh, manage to evacuate the settlers. So you would have the settlers remaining under so-called Palestinian uh, state power. Uh, they would do what they are doing now, that is to say, uh, in, uh, uh, expand their uh, 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 theft of Palestinian land uh, and come into conflict with the uh, Palestinian population surrounding them. 
the Israeli army will be in a position to come and, and intervene in, on their behalf, as it is doing now. Uh, the, in fact, the, the, the situation that exists now between the, the, the settlers uh, backed by the Israeli army uh, will continue uh, under this uh, 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 so-called two-state solution. Uh, it will lead to what the occupation has uh, led to uh, in, in the recent history. That is to say, what you would have, in fact, is not a two-state solution. You would have an Israeli state with a, an Indian reservation next to it. That is what, what is uh, actually, if, even if that could be implemented, which is, uh, uh, in any case, very, very unlikely. So it, if even in the, this unlikely uh, 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 outcome, the, the, what would be uh, instituted is not a two the proper the two sovereign states of uh, uh, equal, equal power, but uh, one state is one Zionist state with a, 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 a sort of Indian reservation or uh, uh, ne next to it, uh, or a Bantustan, uh, if you want to use the somewhat inappropriate South African analogy. I would prefer the analogy with the North American uh, uh, model of Indian reservation. So this is, this is uh, uh, not going to be implemented, and if it were implemented, it would not be a resolution of the conflict to state. I don't have very much time, as I see, to, to discuss the one state. I think I, 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 I'll say very briefly. Some versions of the one state solution as it is as they are being proposed actually do satisfy the minimum conditions. Uh, they uh, do uh, presuppose the overthrow of the uh, Zionist uh, colonial uh, regime. The question is, uh, can this be implemented uh, under uh, present circumstances? What I mean is under the uh, uh, world system of capitalism that we are, we are living under uh, at the moment. I think uh, this is unlikely and uh, unfortunately uh, the uh, conditions for overthrow of the Zionist regime, which is a precondition for the uh, resolution of this colonial conflict, uh, is like the crisis of the climate and the ecological crisis, which are not, uh, uh, which cannot possibly be uh, resolved under capitalism. The reason is uh, I've uh, elaborated on this on, on many occasions, and I refer you to this uh, uh, article that I, I cited, which was published published in the Weekly Worker, I think in. Uh, June 9, 2016, the decolonization of Palestine. The problem is that the Zionist regime cannot be overthrown from the outside. There's simply no force that can uh, overthrow Zionism from the outside. And internally, the situation in this uh, 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 colonial conflict is very different from, uh, for example, what uh, existed in South Africa in which the indigenous uh, uh, labor force, which was vital for the political economy of South Africa, was an internal force which had the leverage to overthrow the uh, apartheid regime. There is nothing like that in the uh, existing situation in, in Israel-Palestine. The uh, overthrow of the uh, uh, Zionist regime cannot be uh, uh, realized without the participation uh, 
and the support of the Israeli masses themselves, is pre primarily the Israeli Hebrew uh, working class. Under capitalism, there is no uh, way in which uh, uh, this uh, overthrow of, of the Zionist regime uh, can, can be expected to be supported by the uh, Israeli Hebrew working class for the simple reason that uh, this would mean that this class would exchange its present position of a, an exploited a class, but with national privileges vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians, uh, the overthrow of Zionism under capitalism would mean for this class uh, becoming a, 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 a class still exploited and, a, 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 as a working class under capitalism, but without the national privileges. Uh, this is not a deal that is going to uh, be uh, to uh, have likely support from the uh, main force that that can overthrow the Zionist regime. The situation uh, would be quite different, or may be quite different. The only chance of uh, the Israeli working class supporting the overthrow of Zionism is in, this, in a, a, a situation in which we, we have a, a transformed region of the, the Arab East, a, which would offer the Israeli working class exchanging its position, present position of an exploited class with national privileges to a, a, a class without national privileges, but being part of the ruling class of an, a socialist uh, region. That is a, a, a deal that could make sense. I'm not saying that this is likely. I'm certainly not saying that this is going to be realized uh, anytime soon. There is no uh, uh, sign that it, it is going to be realized pretty soon. Uh, uh, we have seen a sort of preview of it maybe in, in the uh, uh, big uh, upheavals of the Arab uh, Spring of 2011, but the, the actual overthrow of the uh, present regimes of the of the region, the, the uh, various reactionary Arab regimes, and as well as the Zionist regime, this is this is not something that is going to uh, uh, be uh, forthcoming very very soon. So I, I'm I'm sorry to. Uh, and in, in a, a rather pessimistic uh, note. Uh, however, let me return to what I said in the beginning. If we want to put forward something positive, then the, 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 uh, I think the best, the best thing to, to do is to put forward the minimum uh, conditions for a resolution. What, what do we, we I, I think it would be dishonest to, uh, advocate the one state in the present situation without uh, uh, saying that it it is it, it presupposes a socialist revolution which is not uh, 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 forthcoming in in the immediate future, let alone the two state solution which is an illusion and a deception. If you we we want to put forward something positive, then the positive. Uh, 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 message that we can project is the minimum program. We demand uh, equal rights for all, equal rights on the individual level, that is to say equal, equal civil and individual rights and equal uh, uh, rights for both national groups involved, uh, as well as the right of the Palestinian refugees to return to their homeland. Thank you. This is uh, I think as, as far as I prepared to say.